Hey, horror fans, once again, it's the Horror Miser Money G. Yes, finally going to conclude my Blacks and Horror series by introducing to you or reviewing the actual film that probably created the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, it's time to review Blade. <laughs> now, Blade is a 1998 American supernatural superhero film was directed by Steve Norrington. It was written by David S. Goyer and it's based upon the comic Marvel Comics character of the same name. Now, stars Wednesday Slipes in the title role, and along with Stephen Dorff, uh, Chris Christopherian, and Nubush Wright. I think I got that right. <laughs> now, uh, it was interesting that about several years ago, uh, Marv, they had tried to put comic books into movies. Uh, we had that disastrous Howard the Duck film. <laughs> so it really didn't do any good to want to do hard to make uh, comic book characters in the film. But uh, they decided to take a chance and they created and made this movie play. <laughs> and it turns out that this was a fantastic idea to take a very lesser known character from a very lesser known comic book, Tube of Dracula. And it actually turned out to be fantastic. And uh, I'm going to tell you about Blade. Now basically the premise of the story is we have Blade known as the Daywalker around this series of vampires. He continues his craig to destroy all vampires when he encounters a young and up again vampire called Deacon Frost and his attempts to resurrect the blood god, the blood god I think it's called La Mamira. I don't I think that's how you pronounce it. So Blade along with a uh, Dr. Karen uh, Jensen, a hematibulist, are teamed up together in order to stop Dinger Frost to bring about the resurrection of this vampire god before he covers the whole world in dark and blood. And that's basically what this film is all about. Now, looking back, when I first heard the news that they were going to turn Blade into a film, I was like, what, are they crazy? No one knows about Blade. He was a lesser-known character from a lesser-known comic book, so you want to try to turn him into a movie? That's going to be hard. I mean, come on now, did you learn anything from Howard the Duck? <laughs> but uh, then I heard that Wesley Snipe was going to be cast in the title role. Now, we all know Wesley Snipe was already established uh, actor in the action genre. So I figured, okay, so it's going to be like a martial arts film with some vampires in it. Wesley Snipes will kick some ass. It should be okay, but nothing really significant. Uh, little did we know that not only that was true, but it actually was even better than expected. <laughs> I mean, it really was an excellent film combining elements of horror and action, and it set the tone for uh, film studios to realize that actually, yes, there is an audience for superheroes. Now, this is a very simple plot. Nothing really spectacular in it. Uh, we have Blade as the movie begins. Uh, he crashes what is known as a bloodbath party where he encounters vampires there. Uh, he has a run-in with Quinn, who is uh, Deacon Frost's right-hand man. And eventually, during this tussle, he uh, also saves the life of a hematologist known as Karen Black. Uh, at the hospital when they uh, thought that the, uh, Quinn was dead. He bites her. Uh, instead of just leaving her there, he takes her back to his lair where we're introduced to uh, Blade's right-hand man, Whistler, played brilliantly by Chris Christopherson. And we also realize that Blade is not your, not your typical vampire hunter. Uh, we find out that he possesses all the vampire strengths, none of the weaknesses, but unfortunately he does suffer from the blood bloodlust, and they're trying his best to suppress it. Uh, we also learned throughout the film that Deacon Frost, an upcoming young vampire who doesn't play well against the vampire council that we learned, uh, is trying to resurrect a vampire god named La Magua. <laughs> I'm probably mispronouncing this as well. And uh, we see him going to the scepter trying to resurrect this blood god so that we, he could turn the whole world into this uh, vast vampire rule, something that we've seen in other stories before. But, uh, yeah, that's basically what this story is. Nothing really spectacular. It's a basic, simple plot. Now, uh, Stephen Norrington, this is his second go around as a director, and uh, he actually has filmed an excellent film right here, the superhero film that he, is, he has created. Like I said before, he, com he is, is a combination to me of an action film with horror elements. 
uh, and he has blended them very well. The action scenes or the fight scenes that Wesley Snipes does with the vampires, especially in the beginning, are choreographed very well. It's blended very well. We have nice edits. We see Wesley Snipes in action with his weapons. He destroys the vampires. Even the special effects or the CGI effects when he destroys vampires are blended in very well. It doesn't look phony as well. So you got to give credit to how Stephen Norrington has uh, filmed uh, the film, especially the fight scenes. There are also some great practical effects as, as well. I mean, in the beginning of the film, when Wesley Snipes puts Gwen on fire, <laughs> it's great, and he rises off from the uh, he rises off from the what you call him, but it really just sucks. Um, Karen Jensen's ex boyfriend uh, is great, so you have some great practical effects as well. Uh, they are used very good, and I thought Stephen Norrington did paste this very well too. It's nicely paced. There's no slow points. Uh, he is balanced good. When the action scenes are there, they're there. When it's time to slow it down, he slows it down. So it's balanced very well. We're not overwhelmed at all throughout this film. Known genre writer Stephen uh, David S. Goring has written a very good uh, film here. Now we know obviously he's written some of the Batman films. Uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. He's done some other superhero films as well. But here he, uh, even though this is a basic uh, story right here, is nothing really new. But what he's done, he's given great balance in this particular film. His story is great, uh, and it's very explained very greatly throughout the film without too much exposition. We're not in this scene for five minutes. Or we don't have Stephen Nor, or we don't have Deacon Frost going off mog <laughs> what we call that, mogulating, <laughs> mogulogging, yeah, they're mogulogging um, throughout the story. So that's very good that we don't have too much exposition at all. It's very basic, good storytelling that David S. Gordon's script is. Now, obviously, what makes this film work is, of course, is the brilliant performance by Wesley Snipes as Blade. Uh, he gives Blade, uh, obviously, he's a badass, he knows what he's doing, he's confident, he can, can be a bit arrogant at times, but that's what you would expect of a character of Blade. But also, despite his static nature that he gives, he also shows his humanity. Uh, he cares for the people that he's trying to protect. You know, in the earlier scene, he could have easily just left Karen, the doctor, there. Well, unfortunately, he decides to save her. <laughs> so Wesley Snipes is brilliant as Blade. And also, unlike some of the uh, superhero pictures we come from Marvel, uh, Stephen Dorff is actually pretty good as Deacon Frost. He's cocky. He's confident. And he, he, uh, he's a typical... Uh, now, unlike the, um, the character that he's based off of in the comic books, yes, there is a Deacon Frost in the comic books. He's a bit older in the comic books. So obviously, they wanted a younger version for this audience and for the day at the time that this came out. And Stephen Dorff does play a, a very good villain in this, in this film. His motivations are obviously very clear. He doesn't like what the Vampire Council is doing. Uh, at one point, he said that we should be ruling over the humans and not doing back alley deals with them because, you know, hey, he said, they're our food. We can't survive without them. The scenes between him and Wesley Snipes are excellent. There's a nice encounter that they have right around the second act of the film, and uh, you can see how well they play off from each other. And obviously the final fight scene uh, between him and Wesley Snipes is choreographed very well. So you got to give Stephen Dawg credit for the performance as the villain here as Deacon Frost. Veteran character actor Donald Loge, I believe how I'm pronouncing it, is right. He's funny as Quinn. <laughs> Obviously, even though he's there for comic relief, he can hold his hold uh, against Blade as well. He's not your typical, you know, I do stupid shit and uh, I'm just here to do laughs. He throws some funny lines in there. He's great as Quinn. And he does a pretty good job as Quinn. Uh, we also have some good performances also by Chris Christopherson as uh, the rugged uh, Whistler. He does very well. And the Bush Wright, she's also pretty good, too, as uh, Dr. Karen Jensen. She's not your typical um, female in danger cliche. She's smart. She's brilliant. Uh, she creates this EDTA uh, that will help Blade against his fight against the vampires. And she holds her own as well against the vampires as well, too. She has a nice fight with one of the vampires played by Tracy Lords. I thought that was brilliant right there. <laughs> so she's pretty good, too. Everyone does a pretty good job in this film. That's what makes the film so successful. This is not your run-of-the-mill, typical horror vampire action film. Everyone does a fantastic job uh, in this film. I really don't have any bad things to say about the film. Now, obviously, the success of this film probably paved the way uh, for movie studios to realize that, hey, not only there is a market 
uh, for a comic film, comic book films adaptation, but they can also actually make some money. Obviously, this led for I think three years later for um, Sony to come out and uh, make the Spider-Man trilogy films, which eventually the success of those films eventually led led, led um, Marvel Studios to go on ahead and greenlight Iron Man. And obviously, we come up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So without the success of Blade, there's no telling what would have happened Would we have a Spider-Man. Would we be getting ready for Avengers Endgame coming out later on this year? We really don't know. But I can tell you that without Blade, yes, <laughs> studios probably would not have taken a chance to make another comic book film. I mean, come on now. We already had bad films with the, the Loft Dundra and Punisher and that stupid-ass Captain America film that came out. And I don't even want to talk about the Roger Corman Fantastic Four crap. <laughs> oh, boy. It's terrible. So, a uh, very good film. Uh, great performances by Wesley Snipes. He was fantastic as Blade. We had great practical effects. Uh, excellent fight scenes. I mean, you, could, you can't beat it when you have a superhero film as in Blade. So... The Harmonizer is going to open up his vault. And I'm going to give Blade 4 out of my 5 gold coins. Yes, I'm going to give Blade 4 out of my 5 gold coins. Yes, Blade was such a great, fantastic film. Obviously, it spawned two sequels, uh, Blade 2 and, of course, Blade Trinity. So, my horror fans, what do you think about Blade? Do you agree with me that this was the success that uh, led to the creation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or do you think it was just plain luck in? Oh, well, it was okay, but I really didn't like it. Uh, leave your comments on your comment section below and tell me what you thought about Blade. So, that's my video for the day, guys. Hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up because it does help the channel out a lot. And once again, if this is your first time here, please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you can come and enjoy the horror experience with me, the horror miser, Mani G. And as always, all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser, Mani G. And always remember, horror rules. <laughs> Vince, take us home. We're out. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!